Tonight, I bless the name of the Lord, for the Lord has been good unto me. He's a faithful God. He's a powerful God. He's a God who takes care of his own. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. My dear viewers, our coming, the hour of manifest for manifestation. We believe in the manifestation of the Lord. Glory to God. This is a praise of our equipping hub. This is a praise of our empowerment. This is a praise of our turnaround. This is a praise of our prifting in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For we still believe what God can do, no man can do. He's a faithful God. He's a God who watches over his word to fulfill it in the name of Jesus. And I'm here tonight in the name of the Lord to speak on the title of my message. Hallelujah. Facing you a giant. I believe we all have giants that we stand before. That we stand before them. This speaks and this reminds me about David, the servant of God. This teaches us a lot. He, you know, David by himself is a living testimony of what God can do when the hour comes, hallelujah, when you've got to stand before your giant and believe God for its downfall, glory to God, praise the name of Jesus, yes, David dealt with God, hallelujah, and I thank God because God used him in a unique way, glory to God, because you remember, the word of God speaks about about glorious being a mighty warrior, a man who had fought since the days of his youth. He stood before David with a sword and javelin, hallelujah, with the no unusual weapons, glory to God. But God brought in David in a unique way. And I believe God is about to use you in a unique way. God is about to fight for you, glory to God. God will fight, will help you fight that battle in a unique and in a mighty way, glory to God. David came into the battlefield with stones and a sling. Glory to God. And God used the same to give victory to Israel. What does that mean? The Bible says it's not by might nor is it by power, but by my spirit says the Lord. Let me tell you one thing. The Bible tells us that some trust upon horses, others trust upon chariots, but we trust upon the name of the Lord our God. My dear viewers, in the name of the Lord, in this hour manifest, glory to God. This is our manifestation. We in this channel, in this station, we believe in the manifestation of God. For the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, for all the creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. We are called to be a living testimony. I always tell you, my dear viewers, the greater the test, the greater the testimony. Glory to God. Thank God for the mess. For out of every mess, God brings a message in the name of the Lord. We serve God over turn around. God will allow you into something. God will allow you to get into a battle, into a certain situation. Why? The battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm speaking about facing your giant. How do you face your giant? Glory to God. Some of you are watching with me. You are facing the giants of death, the giants of sicknesses, the giants of failure. There are things you've gone through and they're standing before you as giants. In your life, in your family, there is a giant that I've been bringing you down. But I came to declare today, in the name of the Lord God Almighty, if God is God, He's gonna fight to a battle. I want to tell you, in the name of Jesus, stand still and see the salvation of God. Glory, glory to God. I believe together with you as we begin and as we continue in the name of Jesus. I want us to believe in the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are God and beside you there is no other God. I pray in this bigger platform, God. Father God, even as we hear your word, use me, Lord, to minister the oracles of life. Use me as a conduit, O God, to convey your message, O God. May the spirit of the living God hit upon the minds and the hearts of my viewers in the name of Jesus. And cause a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Jesus, cause the healing power of God that sets the captives free in the name of Jesus. I pray by the end of this program, no stone will be left unturned in the name of Jesus. Victory will be your soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I thank God today as I speak about facing your giant. Glory, glory to God. And let me remind you as we continue, glory to God. We are in the Facebook, glory to God. We are in the YouTube, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. In the YouTube, praise the name of the Lord. You will find us out there in MFM TV. Praise the name of the Lord. In the Facebook, we are there. Ambassador Tony, that the, that the title rather the name of my Facebook handle. Glory to God. And any other praise, glory, glory to God. Let us read the word of God in the book of 1 Samuel 25, verse number 2 to 17. And, and many other verses as we continue. 
Glory to God. I may not read all of them, but I will read them in chapter, I mean in verses. Glory to God. So first Samuel chapter 25, verse number 20, verse number 2 in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, my dear viewers, now there was a man in Mo in Mount whose whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. And the man was very rich. He had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats. And he was shearing his sheep in camel. Verse number three. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and a beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doing. He was of the house of Caleb. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible speaks about a man from a city called Mount. This, there was a man in Mount whose business was in camel. He was a businessman. The Bible says whose business was in in Camel and the man was very rich you see when the bible says that the man was very rich that one tells you this man was rich hallelujah the bible acknowledges the word of god acknowledges that in those days this man by the name Nabal was a rich man praise the name of the lord glory to god but i see something funny and interesting with Nabal. the bible speaks of him as a rich man and it continues to say his character he was an evil man and harsh harsh and evil in his doing, meaning that he was not something he was inhuman the Bible says he was harsh and he, he was harsh and evil i don't know who i'm talking to praise the name of the lord we have had people who are very educated but they are harsh and evil glory to god but the bible speaks much and i'll be getting to that point this man his name was nabal nabal in in, in hebrew language simply means a fool Meaning he was rich but a fool. He was great but a fool. The Bible speaks about him. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. This was a very rich man. But the Bible says he was evil and harsh. I don't know at the mention of the name what the people see. The Bible speaks about this man being harsh and evil. He was known all over as a harsh person and evil. But the Bible speaks about the wife whose name was Abigail. The Bible says and she she was a woman of good understanding. Abigail was a woman of good understanding. How I pray in the name of Jesus to the women who are watching me right now around the world. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. All over the world. I know I've got outlets all over the world. Glory to God. In America, Europe. Glory to God. In China, in Saudi Arabia. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever you're watching in me in Africa, I came to tell you, you're watching to you're watching in me. Are you a man or a woman is it not to be it should be your desire to be a person of good understanding the bible says Abigail was a woman of good understanding and a beautiful appearance. We have people who have got beautiful countenance. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, beautiful countenance simply means beautiful appearance. She was good. She was beautiful. Hallelujah. But the Bible says she was a woman of good understanding. But the husband was harsh and evil. Sometimes, I don't know how it happens. You realize sometimes you can bind whatever you can meet with a man or a woman. Probably in your end, you are good. But then very part, part in the glory to God. You really there's a lot of shortcoming. This is what happened to Abigail. The Bible says she was a woman of good understanding with beautiful appearance, but she was married, she was connected to a man who was evil and harsh, though she was rich. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible continues to say. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And he was of the house of Caleb. We all know that Caleb was a man after God's heart. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes you might fail to understand. There are people, when you look at them, you wonder where their origin. You wonder what's wrong with them. Because sometimes you cannot connect them with their source. Some of them, their parents were so good, but they are very evil. Praise the name of the Lord. I came to clear the situation by making good, making good that it, it will take the hand of God and the word of God to transform you, to transform them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks about Nabal being a rich man, yet evil and harsh. 
praise the name of the Lord. Glory, glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Verse number four, the Bible continues to say, when David had in the wilderness that number was shearing his sheep. Verse number five, David had in the wilderness that number was shearing his sheep. David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, to go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity. Look at it. You shall talk to him because he lives in prosperity. Hallelujah. Tell him, I have sent you. I know it is a, t- it's a season of his shearing. Of shearing. He's shearing his sheep so that he's spending. There are parties that are being organized. We have been taking care of his flock. We have been taking care of his people in the wilderness. Go and tell him, I need some little favor. I need him to treat you good. I need him to respond to your needs. Glory, glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse number six. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you. Peace that you have you have peace that you have shared us. Your shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them, nor were they any nor were there anything missing from them. All the while they were in Carmel. Whenever they were all the time they were in Carmel, we took we took care of them. We protect them. One of the servants told Nabal that David and his army and his team. They were like a wall to them. They protect them against their attackers, against their enemies. Nothing was taken from them. But look at it. When time came and David wanted this man to be a blessing to him, the guy, since he was harsh and evil, he could not respond. And the Bible says, Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. After David sent them to him. You know, it's, it's most shocking. It's quite shocking to the, to the kind of response that this man responded. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at it. Verse number 9. The Bible says, When David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. They spoke to Nabal. Every word, everything they had been told to talk, to speak. And they waited. Hallelujah. Verse number 9, verse number 10, the Bible says, Then Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? Who is this man that you told talking about? You see, he was, Nabal says, he was harsh and evil. Look at it. Look at how he's responding. The Bible says that David helped him before. David protected his flock from the attackers. But when David sent his men to him, the Bible says, Nabal answered David that servant and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I may kill, that I have killed for my share, sharers and give it to the men who I don't know where they are from? Look at it. He ignored them. It's not that we know who was David. He knew David. He knew what David was standing for. He knew what he stood for, but he was just ignorant. There are some people who are just evil. In the time of their need, you were there for them. But in the time of your need, they shall never be there. That's how wicked people are. You are saying, man of God, what do you mean? Let me tell you one thing. You, you know, there are some people, you might assist them, and you might be there to serve them in the time of their need. But in the time of your need, they shall give you, they shall give you, they shall show you their back. They shall turn away from you. But glory be unto God. God will always make Make away for you. Praise the name of Jesus. You are saying, man of God, what do you mean? This is what I came to tell you. God will always send you a comrade who can care and who can share with you. God will always send you a soldier who can care for you. God will always send you an, an army guy who can stand on your train. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, Abigail lived in the days of David. He was She was married to Nabal, whose name means fool. And indeed, he, indeed he lived up to the definition of his name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Indeed, he lived to the definition of his name. When you look at this man, to me, I see him just like Saddam Hussein. A man who thought he was protecting his people, but in return, he made life hard for them. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when I look at David, I see a man who played the role of Robin Hood role in, in, in the wilderness. The Bible speaks about him together with 600 men. The, he protected the farmers and suffered from the attackers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not man was very rich, but he was a fool. Hallelujah. We have heard of such kind of people. Very educated, but fools. Very famous, but a fool. Very strong, but a fool. Very beautiful and handsome, but a fool. How I pray that you will not fall under that class. 
whereby you look good, but you are a fool. In the eyes of God, you are a fool. And you know what the Bible says? It's only a fool who says there is no God. My question is, as we continue, do you believe in the existence of an Almighty God? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that Nama lived in Camel. Camel was a fruitful place, a fruitful park. Right now, Camel is currently occupied by the Palestinians. It is called Ma Elias. Right now, they call it Ma Elias. But by then, in the days of the Bible, it was Camel. It is a city in the mountain facing the Mediterranean Sea. Meaning, it is a place that is, you know, the vegeta vegetation is quite okay. The environment is wonderful. Hallelujah. The Bible says, speak about Nabal. Nabal being a rich man, he must have had a convoy. He must have had, you know, guards. But the Bible still speaks of him being a fool. Abigail was a woman of great understanding and beautiful. But the man was rough and evil in his doing. How I pray that we will be people of good understanding. Hallelujah. Good understanding will help you to face your giants. You are saying, man of God, what do I need to face my giants? I came to tell you, good understanding will help you to live. In the midst of death, you will be able to survive. In the midst of hunger, you will be able to thrive. Hallelujah. Good understanding will help you emerge out of woods. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse number 10, the Bible tells us. First Samuel chapter number 25. Verse 10, the Bible says, When Nabal answered David's servant, then Nabal answered David's servant and said to them, Who is David? Look at him. This is a man who does not think a thought in whatever he says. We are always told to think before we talk. But this is a man who is harsh, who honors nobody. He respects nobody. He shows respect to nobody. But let me tell you one thing, it caused him later on to a point of his, to, it took his own life. Praise the name of the Lord. And he was saying, man of God, what do you mean? Nabal pretended to never heard of God, never heard of David. Comparing him to runaway slaves and, you know, what we call the vagabonds. Hallelujah. People who are out not to do good. People who are, you know, strangers who are out just to harm people. Praise the name of the Lord. He mistook him. But the point is he knew him. But he just, you know, this is just an inward man who is harsh and evil in his doing. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible says something in the book of verse 17. Second, I mean, for, uh, first Samuel chapter 25, verse number 17. My dear viewers, as we continue, the word of God says verse number 17. Let us read it together. Now therefore know and consider that you will do for her, you will do for harm is now therefore know and consider what you will do. For harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scudder, and one cannot speak, and one cannot speak to him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the information that was sent by one of the servants who went along speaking to Abigail. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse number 16, they can go back there. There were a war to us. This one of the servants spoke to Abigail, telling Abigail, Hallelujah. This man, David, he was a war to us. Hallelujah. He was a war to both of us by night and day. All the time we were with them, keeping the sheep. Hallelujah. He was there with us, taking care of our flock. And time has come now. Our boss, our leader, our master has ridiculed. Our master has talked against him. We don't want to be for us. Hallelujah. Verse number 18, the Bible says, Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine. Look at it. Abigail, she was a woman full of understanding. After noticing and not learning well what the husband did, how the husband was harsh to David, she came in between David and his master. David and his husband, Namel, the Bible says, Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, hallelujah, two skins of wine, five sheep, five sheep already dressed, five seers of roasted grain, 100 parcels of raisin, and 200 cases of figs, and loaded them to, on donkeys. And she said to her servant, go on before me, see I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. She did not tell her husband Nabal what she's doing. Let me tell you one thing, you who is you, the woman is watching at me. There comes a time when you have got to stand in the gap. Praise the name of the Lord. 
God. You've got to stand between the gap and defend your family from the love of God, from God's punishment, from God's fierce anger. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to. We are called by God to stand between the gap, between the gap on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our children. There are things that we are doing. We have got to stand between the gap. I came to speak to somebody how to face your giant. Hallelujah. These giants will destroy your family, but you've got to get determined. You've got to rise up and say, I am willing to pay the price. I will stand between. Just like Jesus stood between us and God. The Bible says we were counted to perish. We were out of perish. God had said he would destroy the whole world. But the Bible says, hallelujah, Jesus gave himself as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. On our behalf, he came to die for us. Yet when he was sinless, he became sin on our praise. He became a curse on our behalf, in our praise. What am I trying to talk about? When I see Abigail, I see Jesus. Abigail stood between Abnabal and David. David had prepared. David had purpose to destroy them. The Bible says after David received the report on how on, on how Nabal had spoken, the Bible says he told his men, I let it be a curse unto me. If Nabal and his men, there will be any one of them alive by tomorrow. I'll kill all of them. But look at it. God intervened. Glory to God. Abigail, after hearing he had, after hearing from her son, how David helped them. She rose up, took the two bottles of wine, to bring to the bread, hallelujah. She made the meal. What does it mean? Abigail, hallelujah. She did not she was not only good looking, but she was good in cooking. Hallelujah. She cooked something good. Hallelujah. She knew how to intervene. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. She was a woman of great understanding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What do I mean as I continue in the name of Jesus? Abigail had brains and beauty. They are people of God, beauty, but they don't have brains. It's my prayer for you that God will help you use both. Abigail had brains and beauty, and she put both to work. It's my prayer you are handsome. May the Lord help you to put your be handsome and brain together so that you can save your generation. You can save your life. Glory, glory, glory to God. Abigail had brains and beauty, and she put both to work. When she had normal, cruel response, she springs up to action. Hallelujah. She jumped into action. She's good looking with good Good cooking, a combination that stops an army. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. A combination. She said, What I'm good at, I'll prepare. I will prepare bread. I'll prepare cakes. I'll prepare something good. And the Bible says she went through the she went, she went meeting David. And the Bible says she fell down, bowed down before David and spoke to David as his master. Glory to God. Verse number 24, my dear viewers, as we continue. The Bible says, verse 24, I'm speaking about facing your giants. Hallelujah. Time has come. You cannot run away from it. Because the giants that you don't kill, you leave them to your generation. Time has come. We must set up a standard. Hallelujah. The Bible says, a good parent will always leave a, a blessing, a, an inheritance to the generation and the next generation. I am here to say, yes, we are not brought them well, but we shall bring up our family well. A time has come when we must believe God for a blessing to our generation. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Verse 24, the Bible says, Hallelujah. The Bible says, so she fell at his feet and at the feet of David. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Abigail. So she fell he fell at his, at, his, at his feet and said, On me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. Be priest and, be, and please let your maid servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maid servant. Please let not my Lord regard this cobra, Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and forty is with him. But I, you have made servant, do not see the young man of my Lord, your servant, whom you send. The Bible says, Let it be a Upon me. Abigail said, For the sake, hallelujah, I pray that let this iniquity be upon me and forgive me. I see Abigail. Whenever I hear of Abigail in the Bible, I see Jesus standing between the Father. Glory to God. He, stand, he stood as a mediator. He came in between us. Hallelujah. And he said, Lord, my Father, for their sake, I'm willing to die. It was not easy. It was not easy. But Jesus stood there. He 
victory. He paid the price. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory, glory to God. This reminds me, Abigail said she was not a fool. Abigail was not a fool. She was a woman full of understanding. I don't know who I'm talking to. My dear brethren, my dear viewers, time has come when God wants you to walk with good understanding so that you can save your nation. We can save our land. We can save the body of Christ. We can save our children. We can save our husband and our wives. Time has come when we must walk in good understanding. Hallelujah. Abigail, she was not a fool. She knows the importance of the moment. She stand as the final barrier between her family and the sure death. There's what they were standing there, but she's torn in between. I don't know about you. Are you willing to stand between your between God and your nation? Between God and what can be forced of the nation. I want to tell you today, in the name of Jesus, verse number 28. The Bible says, Glory to God. Verse 28. Please forgive the trespasses of your maid servant. Look at it. Abigail is still confessing. She's still repenting. She never did it, but she's taking it under her hand. Time has come when we must repent on behalf of our parents, on behalf of our children, on behalf of our spouses, on behalf of our nation. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Seven Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name she will humble themselves and repent and turn away from their wicked ways, I will come and hear their land. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Are we believing God for the healing of our nation, the healing of our family? Time has come when we should stand between the gap. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, please forgive the trespasses of the mid servant for the Lord will suddenly make for my Lord an enduring house. Look at it. She begins to prophesy. She begins to speak good unto David. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for the Lord will suddenly make for my Lord an enduring house because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord. Abigail said, I know my Lord. You always fight the battles of the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to. Are you a man or a woman who have been fighting God battles? You say, if I can fight, I will fight for the Lord. Hallelujah. I will stand for the kingdom of God. I will do whatever it takes to take shame away from the kingdom of God. I will use all I have. I will serve the Lord with all my soul, with all my body, with all my mind mind with all my resources I will serve the Lord hallelujah the Bible says I began saying for my master Hallelujah. My Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. She begs not for justice, but for forgiveness. Look at it. Abigail did not beg for justice, but she begs for forgiveness. She does not defend number, but agrees he's a scoundrel. She's a wicked fool. She had, you know, she did not defend him. Time has come when we are not defending our wickedness. We we are not defending our wicked children, our wicked relationship, our wicked families, our wicked tribesmen. But we are saying we are pleading for forgiveness. We are not pleading for justice in this. We know we don't deserve that justice, but we deserve forgiveness. Hallelujah. Abigail begs for justice. You know, she don't beg for justice, but she begs for forgiveness. Accepting blame when she deserves none. Just like Christ did for us. Hallelujah. Christ said to the Father, forgive them. They, know what, they don't know what they are doing. They know not what they're doing. Jesus put it on the cross. Forgive them. Hallelujah. Verse number 32. The Bible says as we continue, glory, glory to God. Verse 32. The word of God says, glory to God. The book of 1 Samuel 25. Verse 32. The Bible says, glory to God. Then David said to Abigail, blessed, blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice. And blessed are you because you have kept me this day from coming Coming to come, come, I mean, you have, you have come this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging my shove with my own hand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. With my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel is, who has kept me back from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, surely by morning light, but by morning light, no males would have been left to number. Every man in that land could have been dead me. They could have been dead. Verse 35, so David received from her, from her hand, what she had brought him, and said to her, go out in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. David said to Abigail, 
I have heeded to the word and they spoke with your passing. Hallelujah. Humility, meekness save the day. Hallelujah. Meekness save that day. Abigail gentleness reverse a river of anger. There was a river of anger in David, but her gentleness, hallelujah, her sacrifice. Her humbleness, meekness, reverse a river of anger. Humility has power. What am I trying to say, my dear viewers? Humility has power. Apologies can disarm argument. Look at it. She apologized. Hallelujah. Apologies can disarm arguments. I don't know what I'm talking to tonight, but apologies can disarm arguments. Contra arguments, hallelujah. Contrition can diffuse rage. It can diffuse rage, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. All these branches. Do more good than battle axes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to say again, all these branches can do more good than battle axes will ever do. Let the axes, you know the axe can, that can be used in battle. All these branches, that mercy, meekness, and humbleness can take the day. Hallelujah. We are saying, man of God, what do you mean? Soft speech can crush strong opposition. Hallelujah. Look at Abigail. She came in a soft way and saved the day. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can read that word, God of God in verse 37 and 38, the Bible says glory, glory to God. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal. But let me read from verse number 36. The Bible says, Now Abigail went to Nabal, and there was he, there he was, holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him. He was very drunk. Therefore, she told she, she told him nothing little or much until morning light. When, when Abigail came back home, his husband was just celebrating. He was very drunk. He could not hear or understand anything. Remember, he's a harsh man and an evil man. So the wife knew very well. If I talk about him, if I talk to him on what my mission was all about, this man is evil. She, he might destroy me. But the Bible says, my dear viewers, glory to God. Abigail decided to hold it on herself. What am I trying to say? May the Lord help you to know when to speak and when to shut up. Hallelujah. During the some of us, as a result of your power, you have found yourself in trouble. May the Lord help you to know when to speak and when to shut up. The Bible speaks about Abigail. She knew when to talk. Remember the Bible introduced her. The Word of God says she was a woman full of understanding. Good understanding and beautiful continence. Glory to God. Verse number 37. So it was in the morning when the wife had gone from Nabal and his wife had told him and, and his wife had told him these things that he that he had that, had, that, had, that was in her heart. Hallelujah. The Bible says again, I repeat it. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and he became like a stone. After hearing the things that were to be falling, the things that he had done. After he blamed before, saying, who is David? Who is this David? I don't know him. The Bible says, when the wife came back to him, to him and reported to him what was to befall them, the danger that were, that were, to, be, that were to, to befall them as a result of his own, you know, his, his way of misusing his tongue. This tongue, may the Lord help you on how to use it. This tongue can be a blessing to you. This tongue can be a curse to you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this curse can attract a blessing. And this tongue can attract a curse. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, after Nabal had what was to befall them, the Bible says, he became... Hallelujah. The, his heart died within him and he became like a stone. What does it mean? He was trying, I mean, he became paralyzed. I don't know there's that stroke or whatever began to him. But his heart died. He became like a stone. First number 38, the Bible says, Then it happened after, at, at about 10 days that the Lord struck Nabal and he died. He did not live long. After 10 days, he died. Look at it. What brought it? The Bible says, The Lord struck him and he died. Let me tell you today, may you live to accept a blessing in your life by how you relate to others, by how you talk. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm speaking about how to face your giants. Use your tongue in a way that can be, that God will stand between you and fight for you. Glory to God. Attract a blessing. 
Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When David learns of Naaman's death and Abigail's sudden availability, hallelujah, what happens again? He thinks of God. He thanks God again and thinks about it for the first and takes an advantage of the second. Hallelujah. This time around, Naaman is dead. Second now, Abigail is available. This good and a woman who is full of understanding. And David took him over a wife. Two things happened the same day. Hallelujah. When David was an I was, I was a memo to shed the memory of the pretty woman in the middle of the Lord. Hallelujah. When they remember that, two things happened. He proposed and she accepted. Something has happened. David gets a new wife and Abigail gets a new home. The old fool guy is dead. You should be careful that your foray should not work for your destruction. Hallelujah. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. May the Lord help you to get good understanding. When you get well, well, what is the key to your knowledge? The key to your knowledge, hallelujah, is the truth. Once you possess the truth of God, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That is the word of God. Once you know the truth, the truth becomes the key to your knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. You are saying, man of God, ambassador, what do you mean as you get to a conclusion? This is what I want you to know. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like, did, just like Jesus did, glory to God. Hallelujah. She stoned, he stood between us and the wrath of God. And he delivered us. Praise the name of the Lord. What do I mean? Soft, soft speech can crush strong opposition. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say again, soft speech can, can crush great opposition. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us read the word of God in the book of Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25, as I get close to my conclusion. Proverbs 25, verse 15. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lord. Glory, glory to Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. The book of Proverbs 25, verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 25. Mm. Glory to God. Verse number 15. The Bible says, Proverbs 25, verse 15. The Bible says, By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. By, by long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Can you imagine? How can you read this one? A soft tongue breaketh the bone. Not hard to know. It takes the teeth to break a bone. But in the Bible, the Bible says, A soft tongue. A soft tongue breaketh the bone. It can break a bone. Hallelujah. It can crush every kind of opposition. Glory to God. You say, man of God, what you mean as you get close to your conclusion? Glory to God. This is what I want to mean. I know that you want to get about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Facing your giants. Hallelujah. How do you do it? Abigail placed herself between David and Nabal. Jesus placed himself between God and us. Hallelujah. Abigail placed herself between David and Nabal. Glory to God. And he saved his family. He saved his men. Hallelujah. He saved his life. Workers, glory, glory to God. Number two, something that, something that I want you to understand, my dear viewers, as I get close to my conclusion. Abigail volunteered to be punished for Nabal's sins. She said, Oh my for my sake, let this iniquity be upon me. Jesus allowed heaven to punish him for yours and mine. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? This story tells us glory to God that Jesus volunteered, he surrendered himself to be punished for our sake. Glory to God. Abigail turned away the anger of David. Hallelujah. I say again, Abigail turned away the anger of David. Christ shield you from God's love. Second verse Timothy chapter 2. Glory to God. The same way Christ shielded you and me from the love of God. Hallelujah. First Timothy. Glory to God. First Timothy. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number 5. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Look at it. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus became our mediator. He is our advocate. He stands for our side. He stands for our weakness. He stands for our defense. Glory to God. And let me say tonight in the name of Jesus, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you can count on Jesus. What are you going through? Are you going through opposition and your oppression? I came to tell you, 
count on Jesus. Verse number six, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. I say again, he gave himself as a ransom for all. What am I trying to say? Jesus, hallelujah, he gave himself as a ransom for all. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, you can count on Jesus. We can count on God. I don't know what is your desire. I don't know what you've been going through, but I came to tell you, you can count on Jesus. Hallelujah. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, the man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's there for us. He'll be there for you. In your sickness, he's a mediator. In your trouble, he's your God. He's your savior. In time of need, he's our provider. In time of sickness, he's our healer. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You say, man of God, what do you mean? Glory, glory to God. I bless the Lord. This is a secret on how to stand and to win, how to face your giants. Hallelujah. Let Jesus be the mediator. Let Jesus stand between you and your trouble in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory to God. You're saying, man of God, what do you mean as you conclude? Christ lived a life we could not live and took the punishment we could not take. To offer the hope we cannot resist. What am I trying to say tonight? He took the punishment. Hallelujah. To, take the, to, to offer us hope that we cannot resist. He sacrificed himself. Hallelujah. He sacrificed begs us to ask this question as we conclude. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. If so, if God so loved us, hallelujah. Why can't we love each other? Having been forgiven, can we not forgive? We have been forgiven. Can we, can we not forgive? Having feasted at the table of grace, can we not share a few clams? Glory to God. First John chapter 4, verse number 11. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The book of First John, as I conclude, glory to God. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4, glory to God. Verse number 11. The Bible says, as I conclude, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Hallelujah. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. As you love one another, you will be able to overcome every giant. Love made us whole. Tonight I want to pray for you as I conclude now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Abigail, through the power of love, she, she stood between David and Nabal. Tonight Jesus is standing between you and death, between you and curse, between you and failure. Let me pray for you now in the name of Jesus. Jesus wants to stand for you. Jesus wants to take it over for you. Hallelujah. Father, in the the name of Jesus. I pray for my viewers right now. Father God, whatever giant they are facing right now, be it a giant of sickness, every kind of, no matter what kind of a giant it is, be it a generation of past, a generation of sickness, I break it in the name of Jesus. I speak life. I speak hope. May the Lord heal you. May the Lord touch you. May the Lord transform you. You are blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My viewers, may the Lord bless you as we continue gathering in this meeting. We are in the Gathering of diplomas, a praise of your power, a praise of your impartation. God bless you. Till we meet next time. I love you. Shalom, shalom. Bye. You are blessed. Overcome and win those giants forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye bye.